The iconic issues of Starliner in particular, and Boeing in general in recent years, have been directly threatening Boeing's passenger lives. Many people even refused to fly on Boeing's 737 MAX after a series of fatal incidents of this vehicle. However, two NASA astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, don't have the such right. They are forced to enter a deadly trap, namely Starliner, and are stranded on ISS indefinitely. Meanwhile, they inherently have a much more reliable backup plan, riding home on SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. The so-called inflated egos of NASA and Boeing blatantly stripped away their civil rights. So, what is the best solution for NASA right now? How to rescue astronauts with SpaceX Dragon while still saving face? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. NASA and Boeing are looking to rationalize Starliner delay. Now they managed to do it. U.S. Spacewalk 90, which Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are supporting, has been canceled for the second time on June 24th. It's due to a water leak in the service and cooling umbilical unit on Dyson spacesuit. The spacesuit is also the main culprit for the cancellation of the June 13th attempt because it was uncomfortable for astronauts. By then, given the ongoing analysis, NASA planned the Starliner's undocking and return to Earth likely will slip past two already planned space station spacewalks on Monday and July 2nd. And if the third attempt on July 2nd is canceled, possibly it will affect Starliner's schedule. Clearly, NASA is not confident yet to take Starliner home, despite its positive previous announcements about the vehicle's status. Many problems are hidden in this troubled vehicle, including some that were detected soon during its June 5th launch. During the successful launch that was a decade in the making, Starliner passed smoothly the orbital insertion burn that it failed in the second uncrewed flight test in May 2022. It finally docked to ISS at 1.34 p.m. ET, one hour and 19 minutes later, compared to the original plan. The culprit for this delay was a helium leak and a thruster malfunction located in the Starliner's drum-shaped service module which is attached to the base of the crew capsule. During the final hour of their approach to the space station, five of the reaction control system thrusters on the service module failed. Starliner also faced another issue, four helium leaks on the way to ISS, in addition to one that had been detected ahead of launch. So far, the precise cause of the leak is not fully understood. It is possibly due to a seal in the flange between the thruster and manifold. Of course, to have a safe landing, those two problems need to be handled well. According to NASA's update, they isolated the helium manifolds, and after nine days of being docked, the leak rates went down. Of the five thrusters that had previously failed, four subsequently functioned normally, and the final one failed completely. These fairly low-powered thrusters are primarily used for small maneuvers and are also needed for the deorbit burn. NASA believes that without a full complement of thruster, Starliner can perform its burn, but they did not say how many could be safely lost. However, they still want to delay indefinitely the return, instead of June 14th as planned. The main reason is to get extra time to review the propulsion system data while they have a service module in orbit. You know, the service module is jettisoned prior to re-entry and burns up in the atmosphere. To be honest, Many NASA former astronauts agree that Starliner's problems so far aren't bad enough to prevent a re-entry. Nevertheless, we cannot ignore that these glitches in the thrust system are not something new. Instead, they happened in the 2022 uncrewed flight test during the docking journey. What a shame that two years have passed, but they still fail to make this system reliable. See how SpaceX tested upgraded and perfected Starship's group of powerful Raptor engines, just in a few tests. This is a basic difference between a company setting a goal to reach Mars and a counterpart focusing on milking the taxpayers dry and cutting every possible corner on quality and safety. It cannot be said that even Boeing's main field, commercial aircraft, is also facing deadly safety problems. How can we place our belief in a vehicle belonging to the secondary sector like Starliner spacecraft. Many people, including me, also agree that NASA should consider using SpaceX Dragon, the only vehicle currently flying astronauts into space from American soil, as a backup if their current options don't work out. In the past, they also considered Dragon to rescue three space station crew members depending on a leaky Soyuz to get home. The Soyuz spacecraft on the International Space Station 
suffered a severe coolant leak in December 2022. NASA should consider the same solution in rescuing Starliner's crew members. It's totally feasible, as you can see clearly. There will be a handover between Crew 8 and Crew 9 in August. NASA can utilize this golden time to send Butch and Suni back home on the Dragon spacecraft. For some concerns, such as the number of empty seats on Dragon and the SpaceX spacesuit for the duo, I believe these are just small deals for a large agency like NASA. Perhaps the biggest matter for the space agency this time is how to send a rescue mission while not losing Boeing's face. Well, NASA can ponder an idea as follows. Instead of calling this a rescue Starliner because no immediate need for the crew to come home, NASA can call it a replacement U.S. spacecraft. We just need to change a little bit how we name the mission. The nominal severity of the problem also decreases. So how about you? Do you agree with this idea? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. However, it's a short-term matter. In the long term, it's also led to a question. Will Boeing Starliner issues delay its first long-duration astronaut flight? Starliner 1 is supposed to fly in 2025, but that assumes that no major issues arise on its first astronaut mission, which is ongoing. As a test flight, the unexpected on CFT was, in a sense, expected. But there's a key milestone coming up fast. Starliner was expected to start its first operational mission to the ISS in early 2025. Known as Starliner 1, it is manifested to carry at least three astronauts to the ISS for a normal six-month mission. NASA's Steve Stitch told reporters recently, before the most recent delay on June 21st, that the certification timeline for Starliner the 1st of May shift to the right, but the focus right now is bringing CFT to a safe conclusion. We're not going to go fly another mission like this with the helium leaks, Stitch, manager for NASA's commercial crew program, said during a June 18th telecon. That discussion will come later this summer to lay out all the work in front of us after the vehicle comes back with the crew and then figure out what the path forward is. NASA and Boeing do not anticipate the need to fly an additional test flight to work out the issues ahead of Starliner certification. We characterize these problems as learning and additional fine-tuning that we need to do to the vehicle in order to achieve a certification for our vehicle. Nappy said, I don't see these as safety of flight types of issues that we would have to go fly an uncrewed vehicle to further demonstrate the system. Starliner 1 will carry NASA astronauts Mike Finke and Scott Tingle, along with Canadian Space Agency astronaut Josh Kutrick. The crew is far along in its training and is working closely with CFT. Finke is a long-running astronaut with Starliner and was backup for CFT, for example, while Kutrick served as Capcom capsule communicator during the crucial ascent phase of the test mission. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.